My name is Richard Marks. I'm in the R&D group. I work on user interface technology and other projects. The R&D group has lots of different things that it does, but mostly it, it provides layers of things that the games build upon. Sometimes it's hardware, sometimes it's software. We don't actually make games, we just make things that are helpful for games. I've been at Sony for 10 years now, actually this month, and uh, I've been involved in many projects. I worked with the the physical simulation group, the voice recognition group, and I worked on the iToy and the PlayStation Eye, uh, and a few other projects as well. So the mission of our R&D department is officially it's to catalyze new ideas in the entertainment industry. What that really means is we try out new things before they actually become a game to see if they're kind of fun and uh, make sense to turn into a game at some point. So we create technology demonstrations and just kind of little demonstrations to prove a point or to evaluate something. Then we show those to the game developers and let them see what we've discovered and then they take it further and make it into something more. So for example, for the motion controller project we're working on now, we have so many different little iterations of it that we've tried out. Some made out of clay where we just wanted to feel the way it felt a certain way. Um, some that have like a PVC tube and a ping pong ball on the end to try to evaluate really quickly if it would work at all. And then they move on and then the engineering department gets involved and starts to make more and more uh, interesting or realistic looking hardware and then the design groups start to get involved too to make it look nicer. For iToy Play, uh, I went over to the London studio and worked with those guys on some just actually we just did different little technology pieces and they learned how all the system worked uh, pretty much as well as I understood it and so all of the knowledge I had we transferred to them and then they were able to make any kind of game they wanted to based on the camera so a lot of the things that are in iToy Play especially the um, the playroom part of it are from tech demos that we would made while I was there together so with with PS2 we started with a pretty much off-the-shelf uh, webcam kind of technology and then we made a few engineering decisions to make it for gaming and in particular the, the biggest one was we added uh, we made sure that it could do 60 frames per second because that's really important for being able to track fast motions and it gives a very fluid look on the of the video. With PlayStation Eye we had a lot more ability to define exactly what we wanted so we made sure that the video would be uncompressed actually out of the camera again we really required that it could be 60 frames per second. This one can even go up to 120 frames per second as well. Uh, we added a microphone array with four microphones across the top here so that the, it actually can control the direction that it listens in effectively. So you could do even better noise cancellation for video chat or for voice recognition. So the way that the tracking works, this actually provides a video stream just like any other camera. All of the tracking and all of the um, kind of high powered things happen in software on the PlayStation. And we, we detect either motion is one very common early thing we did, just see when something's changed in the video stream. And we also can look for features, maybe uh, corners or, or patterns, or face has a very specific eye, nose, mouth combination. We can look for a, a patch of video that we've seen before where we can compare it, like take a picture of you and then look for that picture. And then for something like the motion controller, of course, we have made it very easy to track by having this glowing sphere that we can see and really know exactly this is the thing we want to track. And we can actually know its, its distance based on its size and we can know its position based on where it is in the image. So all of the processing actually is in the software. So, so one of the other reasons we really pursued the camera technology is because we thought it was very multi-purpose. Not only could you use it for tracking the user or that kind of thing for games, but also for video chat and being able to do a video conference with somebody or to just to take pictures for a high score or to take pictures for any purpose, really. Actually, we get, we get approached a lot of times by hardware vendors and people who have little pieces of technology and they want us to help turn it into something that would make sense for gaming. And then the game developers often come to us and request capability from us. But we don't usually get directly involved in a particular game. Once it's already defined as a game, then the game developers are you know, more suited to do it. We're really good before the idea is finished. So the motion controller comes from our research into camera tracking, especially we did some uh, kind of sphere tracking a long time ago and some of our earlier videos show that. If you go online you can see them. But uh, basically we converted it into a product just starting last year 
we started focusing on it more as a product and we started to meld it together with some inertial sensors like the gyros and accelerometers for example so altogether we realized that having this kind of position capability and the angle capability made for a really rich system for games to use from gyros and accelerometers you can get kind of the angle that the thing is at roughly and then the position where it is in the space it we get from the camera seeing the sphere and where it is and its size that tells us the 3D location of the, the device. So those together give us the full information about everything that the device is doing. What's really neat is because we're using the camera actually to track and register where this is, the, the position of it is perfectly registered in the video image so that when we try to mix graphics and video together, we can do things like put a tennis racket or a sword there and it'll be perfect because it's gotten from the actual video so it looks like it's exactly right in the video. So probably the biggest difference between our device and any other device that I've ever seen is we get such accurate uh, position data from the camera. So the, especially where in the image it is, we get down to a really sub-pixel level so we can get very, very precise position information. And that's something that people really haven't been able to do before. So that, that new capability mixed with all the angle capability that other people have also worked on really gives you a complete system and that's kind of the first time that we've seen a complete description of position and rotation. So some of the capabilities we didn't get to talk about very much before were that of course uh, we already said that it has buttons which are really important and it has this analog trigger which really is a great metaphor for squeezing or grabbing. So you can grab and you can put as much pressure as you want to grab something with which is really great for picking things up or for giving you the ability to just interact with the scene in a way that's completely different actually than we've been able to do before. I don't want to give away too many of the ways we're going to use that right now. And then of course another great thing that this has is uh, feedback through Rumble so it can give you some feedback about what's happening through uh, Rumble which is very private and only you're getting versus the, uh, another great thing of course the most obvious is the glowing sphere can change color and that can give you information about what's happening so it can change color to match what's happening in the game. All these things I think are ways that the, uh, really are new ways to interact with games that we haven't seen before.